civil nuclear power, unlike nuclear weapons, seem to be a most fortunate and benign development. And at the time when I joined the, the UK AEA in at the beginning of 1959, there was terrific enthusiasm for civil nuclear power. Uh, it seemed to be in some way a great f new future for mankind, a uh, wonderful new source of clean, efficient power, which would be, uh, as Churchill said, a perennial fountain of world prosperity, and Britain could be in the lead uh, in the post-war era. So it was a wonderful prospect, and many people engaged in the business regarded it as also as, in some way, an expiation of the uh, atomic bomb d horrors. And um, so it was an exciting and most hopeful time. I remember the atmosphere so well. The, the government had just launched uh, the world's first program of civil nuclear power and proposed to build 12 nuclear power stations all over the, the, the United Kingdom during the next 10 years. It was a wonderful prospect and an enormous amount of skill and hard work and enthusiasm and money was put into this this great this great project, so it it had a most promising start, and Britain was in a world lead, and in fact looked forward to developing a civil nuclear power industry as a basis not only for home uh, home generation, but for se for an export trade in in nuclear power stations around the world. So that was the situation in 1959, and it was wonderful. But unfortunately, as time has gone on, we have, it has been shown that though, though nuclear energy has been in many ways very efficient and has for many years provided up to 25% of Britain's electricity, it is a very expensive, very capital intensive method of generation and it has a great many unforeseen problems and dangers. There are, da there are the problems of nuclear waste which are still not solved and there are also, the, there's also the problem that, that nuclear accidents, though, though rare, if they occur, can be devastatingly um, uh, serious. So it has, it does have its pro great problems, and it is still a very expensive way of generating electricity. And we are now in a position where uh, the um, the raw material is become of uranium from which the fuel elements have to be made uh, are becoming scarcer and scarcer. The rich sources of uranium are pretty well worked out and now deposits are so thin that it takes a very great deal of energy simply to mine a usable amount of uranium and it is becoming a scarce resource and a very expensive resource because of the difficulty of, of, the, of the mining and refining the, the uranium. So it is quite possible that if many countries wanted to develop nuclear power programs, there's only about enough uranium in the world, enough economic uranium in the world to fuel one more generation of nuclear power stations. So there is not much future as far as I can see in civil nuclear power from uh, fission reactions. Maybe fusion power 
will come into its own, but it still shows no signs of uh, giving any very useful results. One sad effect of the concentration on, on uh, nuclear, civil nuclear power, uh, has been the neglect of research and development in renewables and also the neglect of our coal reserves which might have been used if we had worked on carbon capture. So I think on the whole the, the, the civil nuclear power was a very interesting, very valuable but very limited option and I think it is drawing to its end and something new has got to be found in its place.